Hey, sorry, I just got disconnected. I had the wrong setting on my phone on. So, hello everyone, how are we all? I hope your, your week is going better than it was last week with all that snow and horrible weather. It is crazy how last week it was like freezing and this week it is like nice temperatures. We live in a strange country. I can't believe it snowed in March. <laughs> so, I'm just making sure that this is working. Um, hi Leo. So I've got a fun project for you today. Um, we are going to make a really cute slider card. Um, we are going to use the celebration set. If you are not aware, celebration ends soon, so we have the rest of March to make the most of celebration, which always makes me sad because, like, celebration means free stuff, and I hate it when free stuff leaves. I'm going to briefly talk in a bit about um the joining something up and why you should do it and how amazing it is and how much discount you're gonna get all of the cool fun stuff um but first i think i can't get comfortable sorry i'm in an uncomfortable mood i forget that i'm on camera sometimes i've just been doing my team training i do team training every wednesday and i've just been saying to them how they just have to bear with me while i'm kooky i don't do it on purpose i'm just a little bit strange so, I am going to make you all feel sick a little bit while I tilt the camera, and we're going to start making our project. So, bear with me. So, hopefully you can see that. Let me just tilt you just a little bit further. Okay. Now, it takes about 15 seconds for this to happen, so I can see it. So, please... Let me know if you can see it okay. Okay. So maybe I think you can see more of my desk. So I have some stamp sets here and that is because I want to show you just what you can get when you join. Because I think it can sound... Um, just in financial times, £99 for £130 worth of stuff. You can't really visualise that, so I thought I would visually show you it so you know what you're getting. But first, let's do some making. Um, just to let you all know, at some point soon, I, within the next week, I'm going to hold a question and answer session. So if you've ever thought about joining something up, um, or you've heard me mention that you get a discount and you want to know more, um, I will be doing a question and answer session where you can where you can ask me all the questions you've ever had and I will answer them um, truthfully and you can get the answers to your questions. I think sometimes, or maybe you just log on and, and watch other people ask questions because sometimes you have, you, don't know, you have questions but you don't know what your questions are. Does that make sense? So I'm using another one of the Celebration Freebies. These are the Tutti Fruity card bases. And they're really cute because they come with matching envelopes and the envelopes are pretty inside. And that's, I like that. <laughs> I like random cute bits. Although, who's like me and would see this and want to use the inside for something? Because they're like, oh, that's too pretty. <laughs> Who else thinks the inside of the envelope is too pretty to use? So, just me, that's fine. So we're going to start with a card base and we're going to do a little bit of matting and laying and I've just realised that my grid paper is on centimetres and I work in inches. Um, what I'm going to do is, and this is how I measure my layers, sorry I will just pop this on the grid paper so I can see that side. Is the angle okay today? I feel like it's really skinny, like you're not getting the full desk. But I think if I turn it, you'll be sideways. Let me know if it's okay for you all. So, the base is four and a quarter by five and a half, which means my next layer up is going to be four by five and a quarter. I am going to keep this card to um, the same colour. Whereas normally I would mix it up this time, I am going to keep it, I'm going to use the matching colour. Do you know what? I've just changed my mind. Well, to an extent. I want to have a bigger border because I really like the pattern on the card. So I'm going to cut this down to five inches by three and three quarters. This will just mean that I get a nicer border of the beautiful card base because I don't want you to miss out on that. 
Okay, so what I need to do next is cut a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Sophie, glad you're using these. I've got two packs and I said I haven't used them. Yeah, I mean, this is actually my first time using these as well. I think they're too pretty. Like, I'm intimidated by how pretty they are. I like no, um, just no plain um, card bases because they are... Um, they're plain. Like, whatever you do, you make them better. These are beautiful. Like, I feel like there's a risk I could make them look worse. <laughs> you are now entering my inner anxiety area. So, the next layer I've cut is three and a half by um, four and three quarters. This is just to fit into this piece of cardstock here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the label punch. I don't think that's what it's actually called, but I forget. Sophie, you might have to take them on my honeymoon. Oh my goodness, have so much fun. I still haven't been on a honeymoon. I feel very hard done by. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this in. I think maybe it's going to be slightly off centre, but I'm going to slide it in so it's hitting the back of the punch and in the middle of the piece of card. I'm going to give it a squeeze. Then what we're going to do is apply tear tape on three sides of this. I'm not going to stick anything down yet, we're just going to apply it down. And I want this to be as close to the edges as possible. So, all three sides. Because we're going to put a piece in here that's going to be our slider up and downer. That is a technical term if you are wondering. I am full of beans this afternoon, this evening. I think it's because I had puppy cuddles today and puppy cuddles just make me happy. I've tried to explain to somebody how I'd like it if you could just, you know, have a place where you went where you could go get a you could get puppy cuddles. Like they lived on a farm and my friends like you're describing a puppy farm and that's not acceptable. But I don't mean it like that. To be fair, any dog makes me happy. I am so bubbling today. What we're gonna do next is we are going to take a piece um of this is pool party and we are going to measure the piece of paper with a tear tape is three and a half now that's about a corset that's about a corset which means the width of our cardstock now needs to go to two and three quarters that will just mean that we should have enough room to fit in there so let's check whether my maths is correct So we have plenty of room for that to fit in. This um, lengthways was um, four and three quarters. So if we go down to four and a quarter, we should have plenty of room. And I have just realised my little mistake that it needs to be bigger that way. So we need to cut our piece of card to four and three quarters and leave it about five inches which is perfect because that's the length it is and now that pokes out of the top which means people will be able to pull it out because they will see it like such okay that's a little bit too long i'm gonna cut off by a quarter i will write the measurements down so don't worry about trying to take them down while i am changing them so now we need to do the next layer of card this is going to be two and a half inches by, does anyone else measure like this? Just measure on the fly by four and a half, I think that is. So if you're not sure how to mat a layer, I just go down a quarter inch. Hair going, it works. So that is going to be our base for our pull up section. I'm going to pop all those to a side and I am going to take out my um, panda. I'm going to put the panda with a little note on it. Oh, do I want the panda with a balloon? Hmm. Which panda should I go for? Decisions. So our panda is going to sit. I think I'm going to go for the panda. Do we want the party panda? Or do we want the panda with a note? 
what shall we go for? I'm going to stamp both of them and while I'm stamping you can decide whether we, you're happy with my choice or not. Maybe you think, no, go for the party panda. This is a party card. So. Just going to ink this up. I think I need to re-ink my memento. I do use this every day. So, panda with a note or party panda. Oh, need to actually put it on the block. Does everyone know how to re-ink a memento? Does anyone need showing? Okay. So, because nobody has um, decided, I am going to go for panda with a note. So now I just need to fussy cut this panda. I literally said nobody decided when Sarah said party panda. Okay. Keep your, keep your votes coming and I might just cut both of them out. Maybe one can go on the inside. So now I'm just going to fussy cut around the panda. Um because this is going to be what goes up and down my little slider card. Now I'm just leaving roughly around a millimetre around the panda just so it's like got a nice white edge around it. I'm actually quite a fan of fussy cutting. I find it really quite relaxing unless you have like a hundred to make and then it's not so fun. Then you regret deciding to make whatever it is you're making. So, um, have I ever thought about the scan and cut? Yes, I have, but I decided it wasn't worth it because I would have to learn something new and I just don't have the time to learn it, to be honest with you. I nearly bought one. I've nearly bought one about five times, but I always decide I just don't really need it. It feels, it feels like effort. <laughs> This is a little insight into how lazy I actually am. But I've seen them, how um, how good they are. So my mum lives in the Middle East and one of her crafting friends in the Middle East had one and she made the most amazing things um, simply because she could download all the files and cut things out. Um, and that's when I would get one, I think, if I lived without access to many supplies, I think I would get one. Okay. So, I need my black ink pen, and unfortunately I dropped all of them today. And I... <laughs> so, this is my collection of pens. This is my personal ones, not for class. But none of them are in my order, and I'm missing some because I dropped the box all over my crafting floor. So this is something that I'll be finding for such a long time. Um, seeing how to re-ink would be good. Cool, I will do that. I will leave that in my eyesight and grab my re-ink kit in a second. Um, no, there's no way I'm stamping up. My mum, um, I take her regular presents over so that we can craft together. Because it's my favourite thing, crafting with my mum. My ultimate favourite. My husband has crafted with me about three times and that's a lot of fun. Um, but it's the absolute best with my mum. So, I like to take her things that I think she'll like. And I say that to my customers sometimes, like, I, I think my mum needs this, which means I think you need it. <laughs> That's my rule. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going around the edge of where I fussy cut it out in black. What I find that this does is just makes the whole thing look finished, it makes it look a little bit more professional. If you have some uneven edges, I find by going around um, with black just brings it all in and makes it look finished. Ah, my, I put these back on the floor, so I'll just pop that there. So what we're going to do now is decorate. So the idea is that this is going to go on here and it's going to slide up and down. But we'll do that after. So I'm actually going to leave this relatively blank except 
for two colours. I'm going to colour in this little heart and I'm actually going to go with a pink. I'm going to go for rose red, hopefully. Yes. And I'm going to get a light grey, a smoky slate. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a smoky slate to a clear block. I'm going to pick up my blender. I'm sorry, I'm going to use my blender to pick up a bit of ink. Just test this out. And I want it to be a nice light colour. So that is about right. And I'm just going to use this to colour in the edge. Just to give a bit of texture and depth to the um, envelope. And then I'm going to pick up my rose red and I'm going to colour in this little love heart. And I'm also going to put some... I'm not going to use rose red. I'm sorry, I'm changing my mind again. I'm going to use pink parrot. Pick up my blender pen and get a nice light pink and I'm going to give Panda some little pink cheeks. It's kind of tiny little details that you can't really see amazingly well but when you see it in person and see it on camera um, on a photo it will really pick up and just finish off the little Panda guy. So um, what am I going to do next? I need to it. I need to add something to my base. Now I've just realised I actually had intended to use designer series paper for this. Um, but I'm actually happy that I haven't. I think it. I think it might be too much. Anyway, so we need a sentiment, and I think I'm gonna go with "I Just Love You" from Petal Palette. It's difficult to say. And I'm just going to do this in black. So let's just take my panda off. And I need to use my mentor ink. So I'm going to show you how to re-ink this after I've used it. And I'm going to pop this. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to pop this at the bottom of my image of my um, card base I just love you and then what I'm going to do on my pop up is I'm going to have a nice little message here I'm going to use one of the other stamp sets stamps in the set life is so much better with you in it and that's beautiful and I'm going to pop this so actually, I'm going to cut out my tab first, and I'm just using the circle tab builder punch. Here. And I'm going to glue these two down. Now this is always risky, because this means that my stamping needs to be perfect. <laughs> so, let's hope it is. Okay, so... Have I done my mother's card and sent it? No, I haven't. I'm really, really bad. But I am. You will see next week why I haven't sent it. I'm not going to say anything else because my mum watches my videos. <laughs> I'd say she's my biggest fan, but she's not. <laughs> oh, mum, I love you so much. I'm winding her up then. So I'm just going to stick this here. And... I'm just going to stick, okay, let me just make sure that I'm going to get this in the right place because what we don't want is to this to overhang too much because then it won't fit in the envelope. Oh. So let's apply glue all the way down the middle. I can't pick things up today. And we're going to place that down. And stick the other half down too. Like so. And then now what I'm going to do is put my sentiment on now. I'm 
is just going to pop in. Do you know what? I am. I nearly just made a really big mistake. How bad would that have been? That would have been so embarrassing, but it would not have been the first time. So I am now going to stick this down because I was about to give you a really bad direction. I once did a, um, a presentation, Dem demonstration, um, in front of a big crowd of people where I was showing them how to make a card and I told them how easy it was and I got to the end and I'd realised I'd missed one very, very vital step which meant the whole thing didn't work. It was amusing for everybody but me, I think. So, we're going to slide this inside here, and that is our slider. See how that works? We just peel, peeled off the tear tape. Now we've got three sides stuck down, which means this just goes in and out as such. Now what we need to do here is take our panda, and we're going to take the dimensional, and we're going to stick it in between the um, cut hole and pull that up and down a few times it's probably going to have a little bit of resistance at first but the more you do it you should find that it gets really easy and goes up and down peel off don't peel off the back and what we're going to do then is you then have your panda moving up and down and we're going to should do this first. Stamp down so that not only do they get the panda, they get the hidden message that life is so much better with you in it. And we go all the way back down. And now we can stick the panda on. So that when you pull this guy up and down, he moves with the message and also you get a little extra surprise message there. And we're just going to stick this down to the base and then we have our slider part. I think we need a little bit of um, Wink of Stella because what is a card without Wink of Stella? Is it even such a thing? And I'm just going to go over the pretty font. And... I feel like maybe it needs um, some sequins. I feel like sequins are needed on this card. And let's see. Where do the sequins need to go? I think I'm going to put sequins just in the middle. Three in the middle. my finger there we go so there is my slider card and how easy was that especially if you don't make mistakes which I very nearly did but you know joys of presenting there we go so we could have done that with the party panda and we could have had a nice birthday card I think this is a really cute um, like secret message love card and obviously you don't need to stamp you could just write a secret message there you could if you did this slightly bigger maybe have a photo here um, so the photo pops up as the little secret surprise um, do you need something inside 
I think I'm going to leave the inside. So, what do you think? Do you like the little card? I think it's cute. But I love the panda. Anything with the panda makes me happy. Okay, so, now I've shown you um, my cute little card, I'm going to quickly talk to you about what you can get in your starter kit when you join. Because this is one of the things... Um, for me, it was the hardest thing. Like joining was easy, making the decision. I need to put this. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on playing with it. Um, just choosing what I wanted was the hardest thing. And I also think that sometimes you need to see a visual idea of what you get, and um, rather than just hearing the amount. So I've put together a suggested kit. Now this isn't something you. The kit, if you don't know, is 100% custom customizable. So you pick exactly what you want. But I'm gonna give you some suggestions of just the amount of stuff you can get. So, first of all, you can get the petal palette. Oh, no, I'm going to start the other side. I did this. I did these. Before. So, you can get the sequins, which are so amazing. I'm using them on lots of my projects. You'll see coming up um, quite a few of these sequins used. This is the second roll of this ribbon I bought. It is the Knight of Navy Corduroy ribbon, and it is absolutely stunning. It is so soft and adds so much texture and dimension. You can also get the Tutti Fruity bundle, including the stamp set and the four mini punches. I'm going to whiz through this, don't worry. You can also get the Hedgehogs stamp set, which I don't know if you saw, um, I did a really cute card with this and the embossing paste, which is such a sweet set. You can also get the truly tailored bundle in your starter kit which is obviously great for men's cards but it's got a lot more versatili versatility than that you could also get the bubble over um bundle which i, I mean, this looks like i haven't used it used it that's because i used it i bought my mum one and we used her version which is great basically for anything it makes really cute scrapbooks it really makes really good, cute home decor my mum and I made a home decor piece for her um, for her bar. Um, I'll try and dig a photo out. So that's what you can get for your basic kit. So that comes to a hundred, so one hundred and twenty nine pounds fifty. And remember, you only pay ninety nine pounds. But if you join in celebration, you get a bonus of two stamp sets. Now I've gone and picked two of the more expensive stamp sets, so you can see how much value you get. You can get the petal palette stamp set for free if you join in celebration this has a value i think it's like 32 pounds or something 33 pounds for the stamp set so you get this free which is an absolute bargain it's got tons of sentiments tons of artistic and um, beautiful images that look good um, watercolored left black and white in different colors it's a gorgeous set and then you get our most you can choose our most expensive stamp set which is 44 pounds and you also get this one free so for 100 for 99 pounds you are getting a ridiculous amount for free also if you join now you also get to see all the new products in summer when they all get released which in itself is worth it so i'm going to post when i'm organizing my question and answer session it's probably going to be within the next week so if you have any questions about joining um save your questions or ask your questions whenever you want but i will be doing a live q a so you can ask them if you've had any burning questions which you've always want answered and um, but maybe you just haven't asked you can send me an email send me a private message and um, i'll add them to the list of questions i'm going to answer on the day i will the most important thing for me is to remember when you join you get 20 percent off and i am a sucker for a discount that's why i joined i joined for the free stuff actually so now I am going to grab my re-inker pot and I'm going to show you how to re-ink the Memento ink pad. So if you just give me one second while I go find it. It wasn't difficult because I know where it lives. <laughs> so you um, will need the Memento ink pad, Memento refill ink. Um for this and I normally use a piece of card um, to do to, to move the ink around so first of all you might want to get um, if you're a bit messy you might want to get you know take off any clothing that you don't want to ruin 
all I do, you can use a credit card as well, but I mean, <laughs> my cards are used for other things. So I just fold a piece of card in half and I simply apply dots all over. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more to that. So Memento ink is a lot more absorbed, um, absorbs a lot quicker than our foam pads. Our foam pads, the ink sits on the top, Memento inks goes down to the bottom. When I have applied ink to it, I get my folded piece of card and I simply scrape along the top. And all I'm doing here, I'm putting quite a lot of pressure because this is a Memento ink pad. I do not apply this much pre pressure on any of our other ink pads simply because they do not need it. You need a light touch. The Memento one, you need a little bit of a harder touch. And I am just spreading the ink all over the ink pad. And what this means is that I am um, getting an equal spread of ink because what you don't want is a bald spot in the middle that isn't inked, but ink all the way around the edge. If you saw, I did the ink in little line patterns. Again, I only do that on Memento ink. I ink a normal ink pad differently, in a different way. Um, but here I'm just ensuring that the ink is spread evenly across the ink pad. And this should mean that next time I come to use it, the whole surface is equally inked and I can um, do my projects nice and easy because I've got a freshly inked ink pad. With Memento, I leave this upside down. Unlike our normal ink pads, the ink is not at the surface, it settles down to the bottom, which means you do need that hard amount of pressure. By keeping it upside down, it's more likely to be at the top of the ink pad, meaning when you use it, you're going to get a really dark, bright, um, black ink. So that is how to ink a Memento ink pad. Like I say, a normal ink pad, for our, one of our normal summing up ink pads follows the same idea. I'm just going to grab one. But instead, um, I, I'm going to grab one that actually means we're inking because this one doesn't. So, I've got Calypso Coral and a Calypso Coral ink. You can see that this one needs to inking because you can actually see where there's lighter spots in the middle. I think I'm in a middle stamper, so I tend to stamp right in the middle and I leave the edges, which means they absorb the ink quicker. So let's just fold another piece of cardstock. Now, when I did the memento I showed you, I scribbled the ink all over with, um, I'm just going to give that an, oh, the bottle looked a funny colour. I thought the ink was green, but it's just the, the bottle colour. Um, with these ones, what I do is I apply dot of ink in a little row as such. And then, similar to how I did the memento, I just drag the ink around, but this time I don't press anywhere near as hard. The pressure is completely different, and you can actually see on um, our normal ink pads when the ink's moving, because you'll be able to see the dots get fainter and fainter, and that is just because the ink has moved and spread. Now, when you want to get an even distribution, you should be able to see that by the fact that the whole ink pad is one colour without light and dark patches. as such. Now sometimes this can take a little while, sometimes if your ink pad is really dry um, you need to reapply one or two times but you should be able to see by the distribution. You can already see that most of the white spots have gone um, but you can still see some of the dots which means I just need to um, move it around just a little bit more just to make sure that it's the same. However if you want to do a really cool effect you can have one side, you can do this even with a credit card or a um, piece of acetate or a card like this but you just need more pressure, is you can pull the ink to one side and kind of create an ombre effect in your ink pad. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it all of the time because it probably isn't right for your ink pad to do that, but if you do want to create a really cool effect you can, you can have a go. You can always buy a new ink pad if you ruin it. So. This one takes a little more play simply because it's you have to um, be quite delicate because you don't want to damage the pad because this is a different type of foam to this one. This is kind of a hard... Well, this one's foam and this one is like a fabric piled on top of each other. I don't know what they call that, but it's 
it's a different type of pad. So that is how to ink two different styles of ink pads, which I wasn't planning on showing you, but I hope, I hope you found useful. Okay, so I'm going to make you all feel a little bit sick again and move the camera. I'm back. So I really hope you enjoyed um, the tutorial today and the few little tidbits about the ink pads. Don't forget, celebration is nearly over, so if you've got your eye on some crafting supplies, make sure you do it before March so you can get your free stamp set. The Pandas is one of our free celebration sets and it's possibly my favourite. If you have any questions about joining, let me know. If you are thinking about joining, I totally would love you on my team. We have a really fun interactive um, Facebook page and it's a lot of, we have a lot of fun. I think we do anyway. Um, has anybody been keeping up with my mini album series? So video three, decorating, is gonna go live tonight, hopefully um, very shortly. I was hoping to make it go live earlier but I had a bit of an issue uploading like I did yesterday. Yesterday was really late because my upload would not work but me and computers don't go on. Um, <laughs> but hopefully it's going to be quite smooth and it'll be up in about half an hour. I had a lot of fun making it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, oh, I can't reach it. I was going to show you. I'm, I'll be back. So if you haven't seen, this is what I'm talking about. This is a mini album I made and I made a tutorial series on how to make the whole album and so so far on the series we've learnt to make the base and we've put together the pockets and the waterfall say we're going to decorate the pockets um i think yeah so it's all fun it's sorry it's completely free and hopefully it's a lot of fun if you have been making it i'd love to see your version so Leah said she's going to watch them and give it a go, hopefully, in the next couple of days. Please do, and please share um, your version. I'd love to, I would love to see them, because sometimes people do things, and I think, oh, I wish I'd done that, and it's just really fun and inspiring to see. Plus, everyone else gets inspired by other people's works. Hence, case, copy and share everything. <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied. If you have a go at the cute little slider cards, I'd also love to see versions of that. Because he is cute. I just need someone to give it to. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week, um, at Wednesday at eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock. I'm losing time. Eight o'clock on Wednesday next week. I will be doing a Facebook Live again, um, some point for a Q and A session. So let me know your questions. And I think that is it from me. So I so hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you have a oh sorry how can you make the slide apart without the punch any ideas yes I do have an idea it's a little bit more complicated um, but only slightly you just need to measure so I will quickly show you because it's easier to show you the next line which I'm really sorry it means I'm gonna have to make you feel sick and tilt the camera again one second okay so hopefully you can see um, I'm going to cut this to four inches by five inches just for ease of doing the measurement. Now what I want to do here is find the two um, inch mark and I'm going to put a little line in the middle of that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure where I want this to go. So I want it to start at one and a half inches and I want it to end one and a half inches from the top. Then what I'm going to do is I lined it up at two inches before, I'm going to line up at two and one eighth and make a line. So I do this in pencil. I'm doing it in pen because I had a pen next to me but I would recommend you do it in pencil. And then I'm going to on the other side go to two and one eighth and draw a line. Then what you need to do is cut out the line. Now if you want to get rid of all trace simply go an eight, a sixteenth above it to the sides and then you will cut it away without any lines. So two and one eighth, sixteenth up, cut to the sides 
and you will have cut all around there. Then go back to one and a half, go one sixteenth above and cut out. Oh. Um, two and a, one and a half. I've obviously done a measurement there wrong somehow. So what you can easily just do instead is just slide it in and cut along it on either end as such and if you go a little bit further down over the line you can just cut away from it you can still see a little bit of that so I'm just going to cut away and then what you should find is you've now got a hole in the middle which you can put a piece of card under and your dimensional will fit just in it and then you can make your own slider card that way so it takes a little bit more time but it's not impossible at all I'd say the other one was like a second you're looking at maybe like a couple of minutes just to do the measuring you could just measure with a ruler I do everything on my trimmer because it is my favorite tool I find it so easy to use I'm not great with a ruler this tool does it all for me and I'm a big believer in less tools, less things you have to buy, less things you have to store. So that's how to do it. Hope that helped. Any more questions before we go? I'm going to move you again. There we go. Um, any more for any more any more questions? If you just joined, this is what we made today. Yep. It's hard to pull it from this angle. There we go. I got it. That will keep me occupied for a long time. Okay. So, thank you so much for watching. If there's no more questions... Oh, by the way, if you have questions when I'm not on Facebook Live, if you're watching this on replay, um, type questions, just tag me in it, and I will come and answer them as soon as I see it. Um, or just generally ask me questions. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely evening and I will see you again soon. Bye bye.